third, maybe it's the fourth episode of Tibby Cast, and I'm joined by Elise Springer, who I'm really excited to talk to about Tibby Wiki. Um, Elise, if I remember correctly, I saw some early Tibby Wiki stuff around the time I started Tibby Wiki, and you're a college professor, I'm a college professor, and mm -hmm. I was just wondering if you could tell me when, where, why, and how'd you get here? Yeah, um, I think that my Tiddlywiki history goes back to about 2005. Mm -hmm. And so I thought I, I'll walk you through a little bit of my odyssey of discovering this tool. And uh, in the last couple of years, I've become more and more convinced that um, uh, I wouldn't know how to do much of what I do without it. Um, uh, our our reference points for software tools, uh, at least my own, right? I come from a pre-software generation. I grew up actually in a, uh, a computer household in an era when, when th that wasn't a thing. Um, I was born in 1970. And uh, we all had a sort of suite of tools, the sort of word processors, uh, spreadsheets, presentation software, whether it's Microsoft or uh, variations on that. And uh, I, I knew all along, even from early in my academic career, that these were unsatisfying, but it was hard to figure out what, what else there could be without going to the stuff that feels just really unwieldy. So there was, there were, there were web pages, there was HTML, but of course, HTML was, uh, felt like a lot of managing code for the sake of presentation. It wasn't really a tool in which uh, we could have kind of got our thinking work done. And so uh, I, I will... Right. Uh, this, is, this is sort of to place it in context of the 90s, the early days of PCs, not the 80s, but the 90s when the web was there. Exactly. So that's when I was sort of... Uh, starting grad school and then beginning to teach and so on right so html existed but it wasn't very powerful and um, a, a very sort of funny story about uh, spreadsheet uses is that i found myself doing things like writing paragraphs of feedback for students inside the boxes of a, of a spreadsheet <laughs> because I recognized that when I was writing a comment for this student, I wanted to look back at all the previous comments I'd written for that student. And I wanted to copy and paste from the things that I was writing to other students about, oh, you should really realize uh, for this text, uh, this is a common mistake, right? And so I had these really unwieldy spreadsheets that I lived in, uh, in the kind of late 90s. And then I had this kind of a uh, gobsmack moment uh, when I realized that uh, th that I myself was actually uh, raised in in a database family. Um, I grew up uh, the child of the person who developed uh, FileMaker Pro, mm -hmm. and uh, oh, see, I'm in the I'm in the way of the little the little icon there, right? Uh, there, and this was a database that was supposed to be user friendly and user friendly. And what I found myself doing then in the, in the kind of early aughts, uh, early 2000s, was making databases for things like comments for students. Because then I could have portals to all the other work by that student, all the other work for this same assignment. And I developed a, a, a pretty complex array of uh, databases that ended up being uh, really vital uh, for for my work academically, especially teaching. And in fact, let me just uh, show you, uh, this, this is actually a, a graphic made in, in TiddlyWiki with a tool called uh, GraphViz. And, uh, oh, I'm in the way again. Um, <laughs> I, have to, I, you, I have to ask you this question and not to interrupt yeah. the flow, but yeah. you have to tell me when we're done this story what you're telling your story in and oh in you know, tiddly wiki of course yes but before the tiddly wiki there's a layer there that's uh you've told me before it's called mm -hmm, so let's make sure we go back to that oh so so what our zoom experience is uh sort of uh 
using as a, as a plugin is software called mm -hmm, MMHMM, which allows me to do this kind of weather caster thing. So I'm in front of uh, a screen that I've chosen. Well, there we go. Uh, it's, it's not mirror image so that I can actually read the text on it. Uh, and it allows me to do things like gesture towards uh, places on the screen. And I, I found this tool tremendously helpful while teaching because uh, I, I teach with gestures a lot and I often would forget what's in my screen sharing, what's on my screen. Um, and students were dividing their attention between my screen share and my talking head. So uh, this tool mm -hmm, allows me to do uh, lots of other and, things. And and... Sorry for the interruption, but once you started moving your head around, I just felt like I had to ask. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and it's it's. Uh, when when it's done elegantly it may not look so jarring but oh, the, the quick point. demo you can yeah. move your head around uh you know different parts of the screen disappear you can even fade yourself out Whew. um yeah. <laughs> and in there's all sorts of fancy effects that i don't use um that are that are much more gimmicky but i i do love that when i'm showing a, a tiddlywiki project often the sidebar is off uh, behind me uh, on one side, and I'm sort of uh, in that space as a talking head, and that allows me to uh, to gesture towards the, the things I'm talking so about. So, I, I, and I, I apologize to interrupt a, a fascinating story to, to, to you, you, as, a, as a database child, you had gone through and, and in some ways you were raised in databases, you, you arrived on college campuses. Yeah. Just when all of the new faculty had gone through graduate school with computers, so right, but, but they were all still using basically were, word processors, word processors word and spreadsheets. Processors. And then you were like others, we said, but I'm um, grading these papers, which then stopped being papers, physical papers, and then you wanted right. to reproduce, and then you found that the 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 work of the the the, the teacher. Not the scholar, I don't think. You've been mostly focused on teaching. I have been. Yeah. The teacher is now you're doing in Tiddlywiki. Is that kind of how you arrive there? And well, first, first I actually did a whole lot of work in databases. So what right, I have okay. here behind me is a bunch of separate but related databases that I was deploying in teaching and to some degree in research. So I had a bibliographic file maker project. Okay. And I had all these quoted passages that I wanted to be able to bring up on the screen in front of my students. So I'm talking about projection in the classroom. I have quoted passages and discussion questions for them and bits of their writing that they had submitted the night before on the courseware or things from their papers that I wanted to pull up on the big screen and comment on. And, and then I found while I was commenting there on their work, I had all these sort of boilerplate comments. Oh, you're making this mistake. And I ended up making a database of all those things, right? Like um, you've confused um, uh, mentioning a view with endorsing a view in, in the particular uh, idiom that you're using. Um, and of course, there was the database of the students and their work and you know, how to tally up their grades, which Basically, everything gradually migrated over from spreadsheets. I still use spreadsheets sometimes, but for very, very uh, delimited projects, like I've got to send the administration a budget for a, a certain grant, right? So I'll throw that together in a spreadsheet, a, a one-off thing. But whenever I'm really developing data over time, I either now use a, a true database like FileMaker um, or I use TiddlyWiki. And so I, what I realized, this is the, the, the tremendously exciting moment back in 2005, is that while in FileMaker there were all these really neatly contained bits of um, uh, sort of data structures, right? Um, like text, uh, bibliographic sources is a great example. Um, what about this, right? So I would go into the classroom and I'd have all these other things, right? But then there'd be like reminders and the silliest little things, right? The, the kinds of, oh, I have to make an announcement about an event or something. And that wasn't appropriate to have in the database. So I'd have some other little things to project on the screen. TiddlyWiki turns out to be a uh, a sort of an integrated way that I can have whole arrays of data-like structures and 
miscellaneous one-off, here's a graphic I'd like you to see, here's a link to a site I'd like you to visit, right? It, and so um, I've got this little, uh, so, so here's, here's what I started out with in FileMaker, and then I have a, a sort of a, a little uh, comparison chart so when I when I realized there are all these different tools uh, that that are each doing different things for me uh, while I'm teaching, and it turns out that 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 basically TiddlyWiki can accommodate most of them really pretty well, and some of those things much better than any of the other tools in my toolkit. I, I, yeah, I still have trouble sometimes figuring out exactly what it is and what I kind of like about TiddlyWiki of, among many different things is that I yeah. constantly and daily discover different things to do. And so it does keep me in, in the, in that range of thinking, like, and I think you called it a tool for thinking. Um, and, and I do use lots of other tools too. And then sometimes I keep drifting back to TiddlyWiki and some, oh, I should just do that in that pool um and, and it's of course it's changed so much i think you and i both started about the same time i um discovered it to serve a particular purpose um and it was much more i had to i hand edited the tiddly wiki files how i wrote my first major project i didn't use the interface to write the tiddlers i just wrote it in email mm. um, mm -hmm. which was you know i just raw you know, hand wrote the HTML basically. So, which was amazing oh. thing because you could, and I had no idea, like you said, that, that you know, how to write that code, yeah. but the tool, TiddlyWiki tool built it. So, um, but it's, it's come a long way um, and it's kind of created this mm -hmm. community or, or a community has been created about it. And, and I think that's a really interesting part as well. And, and of course with the open source movement and, you know, and all the different things that, that, have happened in the past 20 years, it's, it's, um, it, it's really, I think, and, and brings things together in a different way, I guess, right? Um, it, it does. And the community has been, um, in, in some ways, um, inseparable from the TiddlyWiki platform itself. And in particular, the handling of data in the ways that have been vital for me uh, hinges on some of the tools and plugins that uh, that I are the first things that I install whenever I set up a, a new TiddlyWiki project, and so I'm eager to talk about some of those and and how much they uh, kind of exponentially amplify the power of TiddlyWiki. So let's go to the videotape, as they might have said when we started. Let's take a look at the class and the the, the work that you started and or or the class that you're running today, and and. Um and take us take us to where you think we we get a view of it. Yeah, um, I will uh, just point out first that uh, there, uh, I, I'm not a developer, right? But I I have so many different um, TiddlyWiki projects. Some of them are very simple. Some of them are are created it really quickly, and others I kind of live in and keep revising. The one that has been ongoing for the longest time is the site that I've developed for my ethics class. So I, I teach ethics as a, as a staple course. And of course, uh, when, it, when it went online recently, I'm just pulling this, this tab forward for you. When the course went online recently, uh, being able to have students access the material um, and lots of different uh, kinds of details offline that otherwise I might have uh, had opportunities to distribute as handouts and so on was was really vital. Okay, Elise, we're going to turn and uh -huh. chat about the class. And I know that you've worked on this class for a long time. And I was wondering if you could kind of give us an overview of, of how you came about this and, and what it is to be the ethics professor in the <laughs> Well, I, I think that most of what I've done here isn't especially specific to ethics, but it is a field in which uh, there are a lot of details that might need reference for, for different students. People come to philosophy with a, a various kinds of background. And so uh, one of the functions of a course website is to offer definitions, and they're all, of course, interlinked with one another so that a student who doesn't understand one concept can kind of surf among uh, different concepts 
and then from there there may be connections to uh, philosophers and and others so uh, i'll i'll showcase for a moment the um let's see the the sidebar here which has some let's see i'll get out of the way here uh the sidebar of this site has a bunch of categories that might help somebody navigate sort of like a, a table of contents and clearly every course needs uh, a syllabus so i can host a syllabus here that's uh, obviously kind of minimal but compared to another syllabus you see i i use these uh open and close details widgets a lot because oftentimes a student is looking for some particular piece of information and and they can really cut through the noise by using these uh, details disclosure widgets um, so that's one of the plugins that I that I find absolutely indispensable. Um, but obviously, uh, hosting a syllabus isn't uh, especially uh, distinctive to TiddlyWiki. But let me show you uh, the the way in which a sort of table of contents uh, widget uh, can be especially helpful. Students can see a kind of overview of all the sessions of the course and. With any given one of them, they can drill immediately down to uh, the sub items that we talked about that day. So in a way, this is the whole course in a nutshell, but in a way that isn't uh, all the details there, but it's not showing itself right away. Um, and these kinds of these kinds of details are um, are ones that might be overwhelming if I just gave them a you know, a 20 page handout, right, uh, with all of this information. And because it's all in a single file, as you know, it's also not time consuming to navigate. Once it loads, which does take a few seconds, a uh, kind of heavy site, uh, somebody can just kind of sit around and find out, oh, what do you mean by argument? Definition of argument. And what do you mean by inference? What do you mean by premise? And you can kind of jump around um, uh, among these ideas without uh, any delay. That, that's one of the things about TiddlyWiki so in the classroom. We, so, yeah. Elise, we are having a, some bandwidth issues. And I was wondering if we, if you might just share your TiddlyWiki screen and, and and maybe we'll go with just the, your screen and no video for a bit and see if we... If we if oh, you mean without my, my face in it to see if we could yeah. mm -hmm, interface yeah. out that makes it easier sure yeah, uh, let's yeah. try that it could be that um that's too much video data so i'm going to stop sharing that uh, way which, which i yeah and and, and, and try see if, see if it works better to share uh directly okay so now my face isn't in there or it is oh wait i need to change, change um, camera. yes exactly yes so I'll and, change my camera here and now share just the site and see if that improves the, the. I, yes, I think that may, I, I have, I love, I have found it tends to be a bit of a bandwidth hog on my home life. That's perfect. Cause I can actually read the screen now. Really? Okay. So I'll, I'll do a, a different virtual background in case anybody does want to look over at my face. They won't see my green screen. Perfect um let's Thanks. let's try it let's try yep. it this way so i'm sharing my screen about the way that you did the details um the way that you've implemented that and i'm sure all of the podcast listeners spend a lot of time on my website for designrightstudio.com and they'll notice that i use that everywhere as well <laughs> and so that's my I, I even use the same color that you do the green and the blues it's beautiful so i like the details plugin very much um yes and I, I think the way that you, you've organized the class, you, you kind of the, the syllabus piece I get, um, but I think you've gone beyond a syllabus here, right? Mm -hmm. so how much of your class is completely pre-programmed and how much do you roll with it day to day, week to week? Well, the whole reason that I work in TiddlyWiki is that I improvise. I, I never have a scripted class. So what will happen is I'll come in with a bunch of stuff prepared. So if we're talking about uh, this dialogue by Plato, students will have read it and I'll pull this basic overview up. It gives some sort of before you read uh, 
tips. Uh, what do you want to bear in mind while you're reading? Maybe I can make it a little bit bigger. Um, and then I might start talking about well, what are the arguments you see here? And we begin to have a conversation and talk about uh, how reading for argument is different from somebody else who's really interested in the historical details or the literary details, right? And I'll acknowledge that if it comes up. If it doesn't come up, well, there we are. We're, we're still here talking about uh, this text and maybe uh, there's a kind of a, an agenda that I might write for myself um, that references handouts. The handouts are all here. Here's a, a PDF that uh, I hand out in person, but here's a reference copy for the handout that kind of is an overview of the argument. But here are two things that uh, are distinctive to my teaching that TiddlyWiki kind of allows me to bring together. Uh, one is that, um, well, I have a kind of a crib sheet of passages that we might want to look at. So somebody brings up, well, what about when, when Socrates says that? And it's probably one of the passages that is here. So, um, but so now to situate me in time and space, is this an, a in-person class? Uh, it always was. And I was using this on the big screen. So you're navigating as you're talking? Yes. Okay. Right. And so, so I'm so talking with I'm talking with students and we're having a conversation about the argument and somebody says, well, Socrates is basically saying you always have to obey the law, even if it's wrong. Right. And I say, well, where do you get that impression? And they say, well, the the section toward the end where Socrates says uh, the laws are like your parents and you have to obey them. And I say, let's look at that passage. And one reason is that in fact, Socrates is, is puppeting a voice that's not his own. And we kind of look at what does it and, mean that Socrates talks, is invoking a voice different from his own? So with familiarity and over the years, and the tool becomes richer, the more often you use it. Yes. Just, oh, I've got that. You know where the student's going. And so you can use, so you're using it as an interactive tool within your classroom. Yes not just the tool that they're reading online you're they're not this they're you're engaging with the with the text of your class that's fascinating yes. it's amazing yeah and then yes. they can they can follow along how many follow along in their with laptops and has that increasingly been a a thing where they say oh i want i want that that quote i want to get there do they do they do yeah. that yeah yeah they they will they will increasingly access this site on laptops while we're while we're in class and i encourage them now to do that um, but when this started it was really just me and the screen yep. Um, yeah and of course this is a direct port from my database so i used to have a database with quotes and i'd swap between the database with quotes and the database with say um they're micro essays. So uh, they write these little uh, micro essays in advance of class and um, I can bring their micro essays up. Here's something somebody wrote and then I can have little notes on what was strong and what was weak about their micro essay. Um, can, we step, can we step through that process just a little bit? Sure. Here. So the micro essays, you're, where are you gathering the information and the data from the students. Are you doing that through Kidly Weekly or do you do that through another form space interface? So far, I have still a little bit of a, a footprint in Moodle, Moodle because okay. of the way in which uh, the, the login and the tracking of students yeah. allows them to submit things. Um, I have played with using TiddlyWiki as a place to submit work, but as you are aware, having multiple authors of a site uh, can, be, can be complicated. And uh, it's, it's something that I think will actually improve over time. But right now, I'm still using Moodle, and then I'm going in and, and sort of saying, here's something that a student wrote that I really want to talk about. Or I want to, uh, with the student's permission, say, can we talk about um, the example of, of, of your writing? Because you raise a really important point. Um, you have this worry about, um, about the argument that Socrates gave, and uh, it's a common one, so let's talk about what you said, and and then I can also say uh, what I thought was 
so I have a rubric for uh, evaluating these, focus on a clear question, stay true to the text, raise a critical concern, engage in a kind of a dialogical back and forth with the author, and then of course uh, proof proofread and write carefully. So they're short micro essay, uh, I can have this kind of really intuitively presented feedback uh, available uh, to talk through. And I'll do that only with the student's permission. Uh, but mm -hmm. but often students are really interested in looking at examples of one another's writing. So, so in, in effect, you bring the learning management system, the Blackboard, the Moodle, and kind of bend its or expand its power and make it integrated into your text so that your whole class, the materials the students read, the things you talk about, the what they see on the screen in the classroom, sometimes their submissions is all within a single body. Yeah, it's a, it's it's really nicely done. Um, as, as I've been successful in using Google Forms. Mm. Um, Actually, I, I did that this year because of the uh, the ability to get a uh, really quick instant turnaround and yep. pull it in. Yep. Yeah, and even during class. Exactly. Um, so discussion group responses, you can send them to a Google form and um, it, it then seamlessly comes back into uh, Tiddly Wiki. Yeah. And that's um, and so I find that that your your use of this is pioneering in that there's very few software products, I think, that serve um, all the members of the learning community as equal citizens, potentially. So um, and I mm -hmm. love them bring in student work and use that i i use that a lot as a technique as well i think it's and it's student generated content i think and to mm -hmm. be really nice nicely designed for it because you can tag it and and set it up so that you know you've got three students talking about this six talking about that and um yeah i think it's it's right. great um, and and there can even be um links within their writing so that uh <laughs> I, I can set up a link so that as I'm talking through it, we can bring up some window on on some detail and not lose, of course, uh, the other the place where we were, which is a disadvantage of a lot of other HTML tools. And you know, Moodle has so much back and forth clicking that um, it really feels like uh, it's too much tunnel vision and not enough uh, sense of an interrelated whole. So but let, yeah. in the years that you've been using this in your classes, um, I'm afraid of the answer perhaps. How many students have said, what are you using and I want to use that and then actually done it? How many students have said, I want to use Tiddly Weekly from seeing you use it? And what have they done with it? I, mean, the I, haven't, had very, I haven't had very many and, and I have not made the effort of trying to introduce students to the tool. So uh, unlike some people's uh, educational uses, mine is pretty much designed to help students feel like they can get the material. Um, and so I, I haven't yet, except in my seminar um, where I do invite collaborative authoring. I haven't had spontaneous sort of, yeah, how can I do what you do? But then again, uh, in the after the pandemic era, uh, I may get uh, some more interest, but mostly I think they just think it's some uh, some presentation tool. They don't mm -hmm. see the uh, kind of content generation and, and thinking tool aspects of it. But there is one one yeah, other dimension of um, the use of the details widget, which is just super vital for teaching. And uh, I thought I should at least uh, make a gesture in that direction, which is that if you've got something like a practice quiz questions, having uh, something like, um, so here we have a, a question about Socrates values and Crito's values. And I design these questions that are sort of like multiple choices, but each one is supposed to be at least tempting. Like there is something in the text that makes that not, not, not a ridiculous association to have. And at the same time, uh, often, not quite right like somebody so these are group questions in class and they're designed to foster that kind of experience where somebody says i think the the answer is here and they look somewhere in the text and somebody else says but look at this other passage and then we come back together when they've turned in their answers through google forms as it turns out uh this semester and then we can say all right well what do you think about a and then 
they can access this by themselves as a practice question, or we can talk through it in class if they haven't yet uh, seen this question. So um, Socrates is not saying I'm obeying the law because democracy is great. And there are some people who think, well, surely that's, you know, his obedience to a, a state that is in fact democratic means that he's a, a fan of democracy, right? Everybody's heard great things about Athenian democracy. So there's a misunderstanding that we can talk through. Um, but having the different responses, each collapsible, uh, allows us to not feel overwhelmed by the answer sheets, but to kind of talk through them uh, in turn. So I, um, I've been playing around with the tagline for Design Right Studio, and the tagline of the week is teaching the world to write hypertextually, um, mm -hmm. tiddler at a time. And I was wondering if you might give us a tour of that tiddler. Just pick that, the tiddler with the question mark, the tiddler, or, or yeah. just what does it look like at the tiddler level? Because, you know, what does this mean? And mm -hmm. what does it look like? It is yeah. There are actually multiple ways of doing it. And so I'm going to confess at the beginning that if I had not started with databases, I would have done it differently. I would have done it using fields. As mm -hmm. it is, these are all uh, kind of uh, long. Uh, so here, let me, uh, let me peek into this uh, tiddler with you. So we know that uh, here's a heading, right? Uh, sort of standard uh, heading markup here or markdown. Uh, and I, then I, I have... I'm never sure of which it is either, by the way, up or down. <laughs> Here, let, let's put the, the side by side on yeah. so that we can uh, kind of keep yep. track of what we're doing. So each of these little details, disclosure widgets has a, a little details uh, opening tag and a summary. Um, so here we go. Um, and I, I've embedded more and more things over time here. Um, and it looks like this is a lot to type in manually. It would be. What I actually did because I started generating these in a database is I got the database to simply uh, output uh, these kind of formulaic uh, bracketing uh, expressions around the content. If I were doing it now in TiddlyWiki, I would use templates. And I would say here, now use the template for correct answer. And it'll, it'll uh, kind of uh, frame the text in green. And we'll, we'll create a drop down, down widget. Or here, uh, give me the template for an incorrect answer. So, so effectively, A, the pull down. And then if you can, um, mm -hmm. I don't know what the action is called, but if you click on the twisty to the right of the A on the yeah. um, bows, um, mm -hmm. and that is all right there. And that's the whole thing. Um, and you do have a lot of the code to handle the, the visual display, which mm -hmm. depending on what, and much of that can disappear and does disappear. Um, but the point that I wanted to make here is that this looks pretty complicated and it does take a while to get there, but mm -hmm. it, there's, it, you'll what you can do and what I think most folks do is they might start that and they kind of take that text there between the quote where it says a would claim that it is legitimate to retaliate but you know mm -hmm. and that text with their own text and now yeah. you now you've got it so you don't have to write that code you can take someone else's code and write take it and then put your own words in it and that to me is a that's, a, that's how I learned how to do almost everything. And there are many things that I have that I really don't understand. Yes. But they work for me. Yes. And, and increasingly, um, because I came through this strange path of, of having uh, done all this stuff in a database uh, first, I'm delighted to, to realize how things can be done more natively in, in TiddlyWiki. So, uh, but if somebody wanted to just come up with a, an interface like this, they could grab something off my site and kind of reverse engineer what's going on uh, in the particular tiddler. And that's the, and, and I think it's, there's the big picture and then it ultimately comes down to tiddlers because everything to, for, for the, those new to TiddlyWiki, everything in a TiddlyWiki file is a tiddler. 
including all of its own source code. And some pay, you get that and then it makes sense. Um, yes, yes. But being able to take other people's, it's not just code, but content is quite amazing. And of course, in order to make that work, you drag the tiddler into your own tiddly wiki, and it's going to say, I don't understand what details is. So you have to go get the details plugin and add that, and then you're good to go. Yes. And um, and you can also, if it's an open site, you can just edit Elise's tiddlers and play. And you're not going to overwrite her work, I hope. That's right. That's right. This is this is hosted uh, yeah. on a server that won't allow your changes to overwrite mine, but you can play with things and indeed doing things like that at tiddlywiki.com is uh, the most tried and true way of, of learning your way around uh, how things work. Um, briefly, and I don't want to, we, we, I could talk with you forever, um, and perhaps we'll do some more, um, but you did mention a research seminar that in which you've got, you're introducing the notion of collaborative work. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, I don't have uh, permission from those students to share their actual uh, work um, and so it, it feels like it I, giving a tour of that site wouldn't be appropriate it's also not a tool that most people have access to it's something that Jeremy opened up as a possibility Jeremy Rustin who developed tiddlywiki um, so it, it is a sort of a, f a frontier of developing tiddlywiki on servers that have login credentials in fact you see up here in the corner uh, I can't gesture towards it but it says uh, logged in as that's because this is at the, the Zemimax server um, that, that Jeremy Rustin hosts. Zemimax, um, yeah. And um, so what was the response from the students to do, who were asked to essentially to write in Tiddlywiki? Some of them uh, just, just dove in like a, a duck to water. Uh, mm -hmm. And there were some who, who found it slower uh, to orient. And because this was not really a class of about the tools. It was really just, it was a class about the content. It was a class about um, ecological ethics. Uh, there, there were very different uh, kinds of chemistry that emerged. But one thing that I was trying on that site was a radical kind of free linking so that uh, people didn't have to make double brackets. If you just mentioned anything that was the title of another tiddler, it would then show up as a link. And this is a behavior that's possible, but can get slow um, as, as, a, as a project uh, grows in size. So we're still playing with how much to enable a feature like that without slowing the, the wiki down. You, you, you named that notion radical free linking. Yeah. Is that your own term? Is there, a, is there have others been exploring? Because I've seen, I've seen all sorts of free linking happening. And um, um, when we talked with Dave Gifford, when, with his stroll, he's implementing on backlinks. And, um, mm -hmm. and I love the notion of radical free linking. That's a great term. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, so uh, I, I will show a, just a little bit of this site. I think I can do that without specifically uh, digging into uh, the, a, a lot of the students' own work. Um, let's see. Um, Okay, so here's just a, a very, a very simple example. This is something that I wrote, so it's not something a student wrote. Uh, you see that the word attention here uh, just happens to be highlighted, but it's not a hard coded link. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll jump in and just kind of show that that's the case. Uh, if I edit this tiddler, you'll see uh, that there's a reference to uh, attention um, somewhere here. It's not standing out. Oh, there it is. I can see it highlighted over here. Um, group attention. So here's the word. It's not double bracketed. But attention is one of the words that comes up in so many different contexts in our discussion um, because of the text we're reading and, and the theories involved. So I actually have uh, attention, an attention tiddler that doesn't have any content except as a node that collects mm -hmm. um, everything that's tagged or mentioned, or everything that tags or mentions attention uh, gets set out here in a kind of a, a node tiddler. And, and those node tiddlers could also be generated through text analysis. You, you could you could run a you could run any text through. We're, we're, you could this is TiddlyWiki is a text analysis tool now. You could run sort of to see where the frequencies are. Yeah, you could take the highest frequency word and throw those into your tags and um, yeah. 
Yes. Yes, that's right. Oh, yeah. I did it by tagging attention keyword. And anything tagged keyword then sure. automatically gets a view template element that says, let's show you everywhere where that keyword comes up or gets tagged. And then that um, would, yeah, and then there's going to be some, some data processing issues. This was a fascinating conversation there the past couple of weeks about basically giving to the wiki much more, much more power, I think, in, in the text processing domain like you're doing here. Yes, yeah, right. In the meta, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So if you if you go to metaphor, you'll see these are all soft links. They're all uh, they're all generated by the free linking plugin that uh, that's enabled here. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's a really nice development. I enjoyed that that it, it allowed us to suddenly kind of see where everybody might be mentioning something yep. and uh, something that I'm really interested in in exploring here is making sure that we'll eventually be able to pick up on variants of a word. So if somebody uses uh, metaphors in the plural, it'll also come through. And I, I think that what I've done here is to set up uh, fields that, yep, there we go, aliases. So it turns out that somebody who uses metaphors or metaphorical in their text will also turn out to get these soft links to metaphor. And there's, yeah, there's machine oh, coding there's... that as well. Um, you can, there's stemming words and there, there's just word stems and I can't remember what they're called, but there's a whole, so the mm -hmm. text analysis folks, right, do all this by machine. Mm -hmm. um, and what I, for me, the TiddlyWiki concept is, is almost like a small data version of big data. Um, because it, it, it's very intimate in some ways, you're very close. So you're going to, you may manually type metaphor and you don't necessarily mind typing metaphor as a metaphor. Um, and that's going to be okay to a certain scale, but at the same time, we could also let you type metaphor and then automatically just give you the plugin that would find mm -hmm. all the rest of the kinds of words. You might say, oh, that's nice. <laughs> well, that's one of the reasons that, that that's really important to me is that when I uh, copy and paste text from a student or from a text into mm -hmm. the TiddlyWiki, I may be t pasting in a passage from uh, Kant or something. Um, not having to go through and manually replace terms with uh, double bracketed variants yep. um, means that I don't have to modify the original text. And there are lots of reasons in scholarly contexts why I don't want to go through and, and tag and modify uh, something that is, in fact, in, in some ways uh, supposed to be a, a matter of record. This is what Kant said and, and, and what, or what Kant wrote. Uh, and Kant didn't write things with double brackets, <laughs> right? But then we can display that text in a way that shows how these key terms uh, are embedded there. Oh, well, that's fascinating, right? So that it allows us to be true to our sources and and, and and not what the free linking does is it doesn't interfere with the original text it leaves it in its in its pristine state which means right. that you can go get it from others and you don't have to reinterpret it right um, and if you go later and you add a keyword right, exactly right. you won't have to say well where else has this come up it's simply uh automatic and so i think i'm really interested in figuring out uh how to use this a kind of free linking as efficiently as possible without making the wiki uh, unmanageable. It's a form of um, it's a form of scholarship as well um, to, to do the free linking. It's a derivative work, right? You're building on other people's works. You get your free links, if you will. Yes, yes, that's right. Your contribution, and you could write about each of those words that you're free linking, and then kind of reverse it. And so I'm reading at least this text. Or, or take on this text and through your free links, I can kind of see your, your view of it. That's, that's a, yeah. Have you, have you, um, have you written scholarly pieces in TiddlyWiki? I have only recently turned my generative writing, um, turned toward uh, TiddlyWiki for generative writing. I think uh, it's in our, uh, it's in my, my notes here, like the last one here, and I'm not going to show you an example because it's a, it, it's very much work in progress and it's, it's, it's messy, but I have been brainstorming my emerging research ideas and writing projects. And I, I love that I can focus on 
one thing without feeling the clutter of miscellaneous other notes uh, and really uh, yet remain only a, a split second away from the related ideas. Yeah, I think I, um, I, I, I'm interested in, in bringing together some other scholars and writers and, and I like the term generative writing that you, you described there, but you know, those who are using the wiki for different purposes um, you know, not in a support group, a users group, or, or something. And now that we're familiar with the everybody Zoom, we, we might be able to do that. So I'll, I'll certainly keep you connected to that if it emerges. That's one of the things I'd hope to do with Design Right Studios, right? Make it a place, and mm -hmm. it's obviously, but a, and a, a place where people can share in real time and and uh, weekly time, I suppose. Um, thanks so much for for taking so much time to to. To walk us through your Tiddly story and, and show us some some great illustrations. Um, oh gosh, I feel like we've just barely scratched the surface. Well, well, uh, like, you know, of, of some like, of the some of the things that are exciting about the platform. We might build a conference around this, or or, or, a, or a special session at one of our professional conferences, and um, um, you know, and that's a, a serious thought. I think that I think that would be a really interesting idea to to, to do this. I, I love. It seems to me that there's a bunch of folks out there teaching with Tiddly mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and we might as well talk to each other so it'd be great yes um now is there is there time for any further details or do we do we need to wrap sure. up because you've no got... i i i'm 1351 i'm okay we may um, end up with a surplus of of materials for for you and magenta to uh to weed through um but you know, even though I haven't worked with intro, intro students on collaborative authoring, there's a, a way in which uh, I have used the tools of TiddlyWiki to, uh, to track their work and to give them custom interfaces on things that uh, is kind of a fun recent discovery. And that is, um, so we, we have these these questions. Let me let me pull up a more recent example from our uh, from our calendar. Um, we have these opening questions that that we've used uh, each week, and we've had groups submit some responses to. And of course, I don't want students to feel like their grades are kind of out there to be to be seen by everybody. However. It turns out that I have these teams, uh, have students get together and name their teams, and I can show team results in a way that, um, and these are, this is using dynamic tables um, in, within the Shiraz plugin uh, to show the, the various teams uh, that participate in the class, and I can click on each team and see uh, their results uh, for these opening questions. But this is just teams, right? They're, they're anonymous. But if a student was absent, they didn't participate in their team or something, uh, then they don't get credit for what the team did. And I've always generated this email to students. These are your results. Really, really time consuming uh, task. Or I've tried to put it in Moodle's gradebook, which is really, really a headache. But here's a really fun thing. Um, I'm going to modify the URL here so that it adds um, a, a little uh, closing uh, mark, uh, TR, and these are, this is one student's initials. And what I have done here is added to the view template an element that says, basically, here, let me, let me show you, there isn't a tiddler here, it's a missing tiddler. <laughs> um, I can discard it and still pop, pull it up again. Um, oh, sorry, it's going to reload now that I went to the URL bar. There's no tiddler for TR. But what I've done is asked the, the Tiddly Wiki at the bottom of every tiddler if there are tiddlers that list TR in the list field, please show me every, every one of those tiddlers in a dynamic table. And so everything that this student did uh, is available here. Now, this is not confidential in, a, in a, a really kryptonite sense. But what it does mean is that students aren't browsing through a list of, well, let's look at everybody else's initials. 
right? If they happen to know somebody else's initials, they can see their result, but it's not kind of asking for a comparative view, and it means that uh, that the student data is available to them. They all know their initials. Uh, all they need to do is go to the site and add their initials at the end, and then I have some 30 students, and I didn't have to make each student their own separate tiddler. I didn't have to generate those 30 tiddlers, uh, actually more than 30, uh, but their data is all uh, available to them. And there's, you could, be, you could build security if you felt that it was necessary around that so that students could only see their own tickets. Um, absolutely, was, absolutely. Um, yeah. This so is a sort of a quick and dirty uh, kind of, um, you know, like, like a deterrent bike lock kind of thing. Um, and, I think that that, and I think that that works really well. And, and, and it, it, you know, it puts an emphasis on these one-off tools that you might do, and then you'll do it a second time. And then by then somebody's written a plugin and does it you know in a sense and um but you can just do yeah. that with whatever you kind of need so you're you you are using tiddly wiki again as a as a text as a repository as a as an lms um mm -hmm. and at some point you could do it as a great book and it, it it makes you wonder um because it's a fully open source product um right uh, it's fully community developed um where do you think these kinds of products and hypertext in general, and maybe even to the week in particular, where do you think it, it goes? And where do you think you're going to go with it? That's a great question. Um, it seems likely that um, the most important frontier for my own use is hosted multi-user uh, platforms. Um, that would radically expand uh, the, the usefulness of, of TiddlyWiki for me, and I, I know that there are people with those skills uh, to develop such things. I have to give a shout out though right now uh, to the people using TiddlyHost because, or who, who've been uh, developing TiddlyHost, and I have an automatic monthly payment to them because I'm just so grateful uh, for the service that they offer to the community. Uh, being able to have a uh, this one tiddly wiki that's accessible from my home, from my office, from a classroom, it saves easily. I don't have to worry, and there are even backups. Um, this kind of, at least there was at, at uh, tiddly spot. I'm not sure where tiddly host is with backups, but I feel quite confident um, that I'm not generating lots of versions of a file. And uh, if if something like this then adds multi users. Um, that's just uh, sort of the next level uh, from my point. Of view. That's it. that's so interesting to me. Yeah, the most because the it's called Tiddly Wiki, and to most people, Wiki is multi-user, and Tiddly Wiki is not multi-user. It's, it's not it's, easily it's, so, right? Right, without a special hosting solution. Yeah, it's just, and, and even it's tough to me. It's just a difficult. It's not multi-user. So it doesn't feel to me it was it's it's single user, um, or small trusted groups few users. That's um, right. That's yeah. right. Uh, but, on the other hand, it is, there is something about, um, I'll mention that I, I had this really overwhelming committee responsibility uh, right. it, kind of handed to me at, at the end of last spring, while we were heading into the super uncertain pandemic time. And this committee responsibility was um, actually central to handling the pandemic and I knew nothing about the committee I was a rookie on the committee and, and there I was chairing this committee and after I finished feeling overwhelmed about having been handed this role I realized that actually I had a tool that would enable me to survive in in this role uh, better than than I, I could otherwise because there were all sorts of things from handbooks to policies to miscellaneous emails and to-dos and a tiddly wiki helped me organize them with this beautiful um, additional benefit that when it came time to address faculty meetings over zoom or it could have been in person uh, immediately i had a presentation tool just because of how i'd been curating all of this information about meetings and their contents and so on uh, over TiddlyWiki. 
So uh, having my agendas and my um, various agenda items uh, tracked, here's a, a very simple, this was like my first meeting in August. I was like, we need to clarify what it means to be in residence and attendance and grading modes and, uh, you know, pass fail courses. And what are, there were so many disparate agenda items that were going to develop over the course of a year. And I can't imagine having done this with an ordinary task manager or with uh, uh, some kind of tool like Evernote or anything like that because the expandability and the ability to move seamlessly back and forth between editing and displaying. Uh, gosh, I, I'm preaching to the converted here, right? Um, no, but, but it, it does touch on uh, on an aspect of Piddly Weekly that is distinctive. You touched on it very early in the conversation when you were talking about FileMaker, FileMaker Pro, and, and the notion of a database, um, which a database is a series of tables with a set of, of, of columns, essentially. And adding a column to a table was a big deal. Um, and adding a table was a big deal. And adding, a, and so, and the nature of Tidly Wiki is that it's not. Um, and the pandemic, um, and, and I, it gives me a little bit of uh, stress seeing the agenda because I've been in those meetings. <laughs> and, 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 yes. You no, know, and, and the um, and the the pandemic itself also was not in a well organized data structure. Even the, and the institutional response was not organized. That's right. It, had to, it was massively expanding in multiple directions simultaneously, and then circling back on itself and. And so you, I mm -hmm. think that your the metaphor Tidly Wiki is the perfect metaphor in a sense for pandemic management because it and not it endlessly moves in multiple directions simultaneously and is never overwhelmed. It was and, never overwhelmed, and and so I have a whole year's worth of data. And when I went to write the annual report, yeah. um, I could pull up an overview of all the meetings. Each one I could find the minutes if I wanted to find all the minutes. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that's easy too. here are all the minutes. Um, it's just possible for me to, to drill down uh, at whatever level of, of detail I needed uh, throughout the year and to, to stay light on my feet with uh, an otherwise pretty overwhelming responsibility. And that that drilling capability of filtering, listing and, and being able to move in and out, I think, of it is really what's the um, almost the magic sauce of Tidly Wiki. It's not big data, it's not small, but it, it allows you to zoom in and out of groups um, and um, you know different, pretty much without hesitation. So you can zoom on any dimension. So it's a pure multi-dimensional, to me, it's the kind of purest expression of hypertext. Mm -hmm. uh, as conceptually that I've seen. So um, I'm excited about that. Um, and um, so it, it's been wonderful chatting with you. Um, Likewise. And, and um, I, I hope we find ourselves um, crossing paths again. And I'm sure that we will in the Tidly Wiki community. What I, what I will do is encourage you to be aware of the Tidly Wiki. I'll, I'll, I'll get you a permalink uh, to the place where on my ethics website, there's a kind of a tour through everything uh, that's some kind of uh, demo element, what the plugins are, how my style sheets work, what macros I use, etc. So that uh, there's sort of a consolidated, uh, how do you do that? Uh, the answers are, are mostly here. And uh, I'll, I'll send that to you in, in an email or uh, actually, I suppose I could even do it in Zoom. But I'll, I'll send you a link to that so that folks can. And you, you've done what I don't do, which is document your own work beautifully. So I thank you very much for that. And it, it, it makes it so much easier to encourage other professors to say, here's the tools and, and build on it. And, um, and, and I, I hope we're able to do that. So thanks again. Thank you so much. And um, I wish you luck with uh, <laughs> uh, pulling together something like a, a followable <laughs> script out of, out of all of our rambling conversation. Oh, no.